Meantime, guys, uh, we'll turn to Ulta Beauty, one of the top 10 best performing names over the last decade, and rising nearly 1,300% in that time. Mary Dillon has been the CEO of Ulta for the majority of that, and she's here at Post 9 in a CNBC exclusive. I know Jim wishes he were here, Mary. It's great to have you. Thank Welcome. you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. Stock's doing well today, close to a four-month high as we sort of get a report card on holiday. Are we, are we starting to answer for those middle of the year, last year concerns about the category, about makeup? Well, let me step back and say we are thrilled about the 10-year run that we've had, but we think we have so much runway ahead. But if you go back in the last 10 years, we've gone from about 300 stores to over 1,200. Our sales went from a billion to over 7 billion. We're the number one destination for teens, so this is all good. And, you know, about mid-year last year, we talked about makeup as a category being a little softer than previous years. The beauty of the Ulta Beauty business model is we operate in every category of beauty. So skin care is on fire, hair care, um, you know, fragrance. And makeup, we know, is going to come back. There's plenty of engagement in makeup, plenty. It's just we're looking for some new incremental innovation. Do you think it's something structural where... I don't know, millennials, social media has changed the way we think of makeup, or is it more of a share gain from a disintegrating department store atmosphere? I'd say there's always shifting consumer behavior in every consumer category. People are very into makeup, Gen Z, very into makeup. And so we see new trends coming, everything from skincare, which is starting younger, which will stay with our guests forever, makeup that's maybe a more natural look, but also makeup that's even things like sequins and glitter on your eyes. I don't think you've tried that, but no. trust me, it's a thing. No. So. But Dave, if David does, I mean. David has. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 well, you know, Mary, you have talked a number of times, of course, recently about the looks and trends that are evolving. Uh, and you know it's going to take time to bring newness and innovation. You yes. just said it right there. I guess some of your shareholders, who are not unhappy with you, of yeah. course, nonetheless want to sort of get a better sense. When is that newness and innovation going to then mark an uptrend in the category yeah. that's been down for, what, a couple of years now? It's, it's been down for the last year a bit, just makeup. But again, beauty in total is up. Let me reiterate, we are gaining market share in makeup and in every category. So our business model, we know, is really set for the past 30 years as well as the future 50 years. And so it'll just take a little bit of time, but we're not concerned about it. What we see happening, like I said, is younger consumers getting very engaged in skincare. That's a trend they're going to keep with them their whole lives as they then get into the makeup business as well. So our brand partners, big and small, are have all sorts of innovation coming. You know, it's, it can't say exactly when, but we feel confident. It's a, you know, these are cycles. Cycles happen in businesses all the time. Jim? Mary, uh, there's something, first of all, congratulations on all, all of your success Thank over you. the years. Uh, a lot of companies, even great retail companies, try to get to have 10, 12, 15 million loyalty people. You have more than 10% of the country in your loyalty plan. How's that possible? Well, thank you for asking. We have over 33 million beauty enthusiasts passionately in our loyalty program, Ultimate Rewards, because we think we offer a great program that they love. Our store teams really help educate our guests about the benefits of it. And over time, we've been investing in capabilities to make the offers to our guests even more personalized and relevant every day. So we surprise and delight them. We encourage them to come and spend you know, with Ulta Beauty, and it's showing in the numbers. We're driving market share gains. Our brand awareness is at an incredible high, and teens love us, and that bodes very well for the future. I love the site. There's some great, there's some great bargains. Thank you. You've, you've done something else that I think is incredible. You realized that there wasn't a lot of innovation in some part of cosmetics. You, just like Fabrizio Freda, who is a great CEO, I know who works close right. with you at Estee Lauder, you were able yeah. to pivot to skincare. I don't think people recognize how incredible that was. Could you? I know. I mean, I'm going to brag for you. Most people couldn't make that adjustment in a quarter. You did it. Uh, how much better? The margins of skincare are pretty good, aren't they? Well, sure, they are. And I give a lot of credit to my team. You know, we're always out learning about what's hot and what's happening in beauty. Skincare, and as you mentioned, Fabrizio is an expert at knowing global beauty trends. It's been a trend for some period of time. So we've been participating. We do services in our in every Ulta Beauty store, as you know, from hair care to skin services, makeup and brow services. And we've been adding a tremendous number of new innovative brands. And what's cool about skincare is new rituals are being formed. You know, things like masks and serums that didn't exist many years ago. And as I said, younger people starting, women my age and older men in the skincare category. So it's a really great business to be in. Can you comment directly on holiday and 
uh, your inventory strategy going into this year? What does that look well, like? Well, you know, listen, we're still in the quarter, so I can't say a lot about it, but holiday is a great time of year for Ulta Beauty because we can participate in gift giving as well as we call it glamming. So when you're going to all the holiday events, the thing that I will say about holiday is like many retailers, we've seen that consumer shopping patterns continue to evolve and retailers who are set up well to have a great in-store experience, a great online experience and omnichannel, the ability to buy online and pick up in store. That we are set up to do all of that, and that was very helpful for us throughout Halloween. You mentioned the number of locations, but is physical presence less important? Yes, yeah, such a great question. And listen, we believe, I believe to our core, that beauty is an experience that will always be physical and digital and emotional and about really human connection. And so the vast majority of our sales happen in our stores. Why? Because our guests love to come and try, you know, look at a color, smell a fragrance, have an experience with one of our associates. That's cool. But they also need to make sure that we can be conveniently uh, ready for them whenever they need it. So we need to play in all places, and, we're, and our stores are doing quite well. Yeah, so that said, I'm curious as to how you think about expansion from here. What, over 1,200 stores. I know the Canadian market beckons as well. I mean, yeah. how should we be thinking about 2020 in terms of store opening? Yeah, we plan to continue to grow in the U.S. We've stated publicly that our range is, you know, 14 to 17 1,500 stores in the U.S. We think we have the potential to be at that level, so more coming. And then we've already announced that we plan to become a global beauty retailer. So Canada is first up to bat, and we can't divulge a lot of details right now, but we're in the process of getting ready to launch in Canada, which we think is going to be a fantastic market for right. us. Jim's got one more question. Yeah. Jim? Mary, I, you anticipate a lot of trends, and one of the things that I've found is, is that younger people they are going away from what I regard as being the long label cosmetics. Uh, you are ready with vegan, ready with cruelty free. You are addressing uh, basically the environmental issues. How is that working? Because I think a lot of the younger people are turned off by tradition. Well, you're absolutely right. The trend about clean is here, and it's here to stay in beauty. I started my career in the food industry. It took a long time for, I'd say, natural and organic to become mainstream, and obviously it is now. In beauty, it's happening. We're participating with so many exciting brands. We just launched a brand called Th Thrive Cosmetics, which is vegan and cruelty-free. We have many brands that we uh, offer to our guests in that place. We know that's a trend that's going to continue, whether it's in skincare, makeup, or everything in beauty.